Humans have fascinated and enthralled humans since ancient times, but scientists are only beginning to unlock the secrets of our feathered friends. Take for example the old phrase bird brain. We now know that birds are some of the smartest and most inventive of all vertebrates. Similarly, advances in recording and computation technology have allowed scientists to analyze large flocks of birds, like this video of European starlings. Amazing. The birds seem to exhibit a mind of their own as they move through the sky. Why these birds flock like this is unknown. Perhaps it provides protection from predators or allows some sort of communal feeding to occur. Other groups of animals, like herds of bison or schools of fish, display collective behavior as well. But regardless of why these animals do it, we can study how using statistical mechanics. Let's take a look. The theory of collective behavior suggests that each bird in the flock matches the behavior of birds around it, such that when you look at the whole on the flock level, you get some sort of macro behavior. The paper I'm going to be describing comes from a, a group of scientists known as Starflag based in Europe, uh, and they principally work with how to apply mathematical models to the study of collective behavior in animals such as uh, flocks of birds, schools of fish, etc. The approach they use is called the maximum entropy approach, uh, which basically suggests that the most probable distribution of a system, like a flock of birds or schools of fish, uh, is the one that maximizes the entropy. And there are a lot of benefits to this approach because it doesn't assume anything intrinsic about the nature of the interactions between the members of a group. To gather experimental data, the researchers use a camera that takes a snapshot of each flock. Now, sophisticated software that these scientists use allows us to characterize each bird in the flock by a vector corresponding to its uh, direction, given i, which is just the unit vector of its velocity. Now, the scientists propose that the Heisenberg model is a good place to start. The Heisenberg model looks like the Ising model, but instead of two possible states, up and down, the spins can point in any direction. This makes sense given that a bird in a flock may orient itself in any way. J i j is a factor that indicates the interacting strength of two birds. The model suggests that a low energy state is one where the bird is oriented with other birds in the flock, and a high energy state is one where the bird points a different direction than the flock. We can already see how collective behavior could arise. As one bird turns, the others around it want to turn as well. In modeling collective behavior, it is useful to look at the correlation between two birds to see how they interact. The correlation factor, C, I, J, is just the dot product of the directional vectors of the two birds, I and J. From this, we can construct a correlation matrix for the whole flock constituting thousands of individuals. Quite clearly, if we think about our model, each correlation factor has a different interaction strength. This makes sense because birds would take information about where to turn from visual cues, so only birds they can directly see would influence them. Directly. The scientists suggest that birds take information from a small subset of neighbors and see. From there, they calculate the average correlation from the neighborhood, where n is the local neighborhood size of each bird i. Note that j is only of the subset of birds that are within that neighborhood size, which means that this correlation factor is only calculated over that small subset of birds. To solve the model based on the Heisenberg model, they suggest that a probability distribution exists in the form given for the flock of birds. Note that the partition function is a function of the interaction strength j for each pair of birds. And the equation for entropy is the Shannon entropy given by information theory. The maximum entropy approach says that we need to find the distribution that maximizes the entropy, which is completing using par partial derivatives. The only thing left to do is to find the values of j and nc that give us the probability distribution that maximizes entropy. These values of j and nc are constrained by the experimental data. Part of calculating values of j and nc is calculating the partition function. The details are complicated, but there are a few qualitative points to note. Because a flock generally moves in a single direction, we can say that it's polarized. This means that all the perpendicular components of each bird's SI vector cancel out when summed over the flock. In addition, the model treats birds on the border differently than birds on the interior of the flock. This should make sense. Birds on the border have fewer neighbors and take environmental cues in addition to neighborly ones when deciding on how to turn. We can see that the model is better with border effects included. The results of their modeling study suggest that the interaction strength 
and the neighborhood size are independent of the size and density of the flock. Now that means that these values are topologically dependent rather than spatially dependent. So no matter the size of the flock, if it's really sparse or really dense, the amount of birds that a certain bird is going to take information from is going to be about the same. And they also found that value to be around 6 to 7, which means that any bird in a flock is going to look at the 6 or 7 neighbors around it and decide which direction to turn. The same group published a paper in 2014 that follows the same model but looks at the distribution of velocities instead of directions. They found that the correlation of velocities was also scale-free, which means that it is independent of the size of the flock. Functionally, this means birds on one end of the flock that change their velocity send that information very quickly to the other end of the flock. The authors of the paper suggest that this means that the correlation length goes to at least the size of the flock. This means that a typical flock exists near a critical point, which is a cool analog to the physical phase systems like magnets. The results of studies like these suggest that the maximum entropy approach can be used to successfully model collective behavior, using statistic mechanics to reveal the secrets of large groups of animals. Maybe it's just a friendly reminder that you can escape partition functions by leaving regions.